What's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about series Bibles. So this is a topic I've wanted to cover for a very long time, but I never really had a favorite solution for what to use to make a series Bible. So I'm gonna try a bunch of different things to try to help you guys figure out what works best for you. So what is this specific video about then? I don't wanna rehash the basics every single time I cover one of the different methods. So I'm gonna put it all here and then whenever I do a video covering a method, I'll just link back to this one. So in this video, I'm gonna cover the what, why, when, and where. First things first, what is a series Bible? A series Bible is something that actually came over from screenwriting in television series and was mostly used in pitching new series ideas. So essentially, a series Bible is just a condensed collection of all of the little details and information you need to know about your series. Why do you need a series Bible? Because if you don't have a series Bible, your life will become a living hell. The gods of writing will rain their wrath down on you and will smit, smite you. Smitten? They will smite you down for your sins of not having a writing Bible. I'm, I'm trying to relate this to religion, but I grew up without religion, so I don't know how all the smiting works. Um, so, yes, my life is currently living hell. Because I didn't make the series Bible for Aletheia, I thought, in all of my infinite wisdom, I'll remember all of these details. This is my world. I birthed it from my soul. How am I possibly going to forget that this one character has this burn scar around his neck? That's not a detail you just forget. Except it is. As most of you guys know, I'm now writing Red River, which is the sequel to Aletheia. And now I'm at the stage where my alpha reader is going to start reading. Just to clarify, I call him my alpha reader. It's like a critique partner, but he's not a writer. Um, it's Josh. He's actually really good at critiquing. So if you're interested in getting your work critiqued, head over to our Patreon. The $35 and the $50 tier come with word critiques from him. So he's about to sink his teeth into Red River. And true to its name, he's going to take his red pen and he is going to make a literal river of red throughout my entire manuscript. But to reduce that red, I get to do the super fun task now of rereading Aletheia to create a series Bible. Because there are all sorts of tiny inconsistencies right now in my Red River draft because those details fade really quickly. So the point of a series Bible is if you're not sure what color eyes the character has, you just open up your series Bible and it's right there. If you are writing a series, this is essential because it will make sure there's continuity between your books and your readers will thank you for it. So now on to the when. When should you start your series Bible? For the love of a ceiling cat, Ceiling Cat, a feline deity who enjoys carving a hidden niche into the ceiling so it can hide above its victim's bed and watch masturbation take place. For the love of a ceiling cat and all things holy, learn from my mistakes and don't try to start your series Bible when you're in the middle of writing the sequel. Just start your series Bible when you're starting your first book. If you didn't do that and you're already a book or more in, reread your books and make one, as I'm currently doing. Again, living hell. I love Aletheia, I think it's a good book, but still, like you're reading through it and you're thinking of all these ideas and little subplots you could have done differently, and you just, you wanna make these little changes and you can't, and it drives you crazy. And now on to the what. What do you need to include in your series Bible? Everything but not actually everything. You don't wanna spend so much time working on your series Bible that you don't ever write, but you want all of the details that you're gonna need for the sequels in this document. So first thing you're gonna want is to keep track of some things that you're just gonna need throughout the life of the book for promotion and stuff. So you're gonna want a blurb. You don't have to do this from the second you start writing the book, but you're gonna eventually want that. Same with the synopsis. Log lines, so that when people ask you what your book's about, you can pitch it in a couple lines. Next, you'll want a description of the overall theme and tone, and if you have it, the overarching question that you're asking. And then, of course, timelines. You're gonna want to keep track of when each event takes place. Then, an outline, if you're an outliner, for not just your book, but if you have an idea of where you want your series to go, you can have an outline for the entire series. Another good thing to include is a glossary, especially if you're writing a fantasy or a sci-fi book where there's a ton of terminology that you're gonna wanna include. 
And last but not least, world building details. And this is a whole just giant package of information in its own. And for this, you're gonna mostly wanna go off of things like character building sheets and location information sheets. And I'm gonna cover the how to make these things in other videos. But some of the things that are gonna be included in these world building details are character information, so physical description, goals and motives, flaws, arc, fears and weaknesses. We also have things like locations, settlements, rules and laws, both magical and otherwise, maps and geography, history, diseases and conditions, which is less common, but I have to keep track of that because Aletheia has left. Technically pronounced Lethe, I'm calling it Leth. I'm the author, I'm right, Shh, it's okay. And of course the cures and all of that, so I have to keep track of disease information. And then we have groups, alliances, governments, myths and legends, creatures and species, races and ethnicities, noteworthy items such as clothing, weapons, armor, vehicles, religions and deities, festivals, traditions and holidays, language, and other misc items like weather and food and drink and anything that's relevant to your story. Next up. Where do you keep track of all of this? Because this is a lot of information. There's not really a clear cut solution. I have seen a lot of people use a lot of different methods and I think they all have strengths and weaknesses. So first off we have the binder method, which is what I've most commonly seen. And a lot of people will write their character sheets in the computer and then print it out and then put it in the binder and fill it out in pen. Another alternative is that you could fill out the information on the computer and then print it out and then put it in a binder because a lot of people like to have a solid copy of it. You could use a software like Trello to keep track of everything if you want to see kind of how that would work. In the meantime, until I create a video on how to do it for series Bibles, I covered a video on using Trello for outlining. I'll link that in the description down below, card up here. You could use a general kind of writing software like Word, Scrivener, or Google Docs. Do you want to know the perks of using Google Docs? Another video, link in the description down below. Or you could use a software designed for world building, such as Campfire, which I haven't used, but I've seen a little bit on it. Um, for a review on that, I'll link a specific timestamp in a video down below where Hello Future Me covers it. And then another alternative software that I've found that seems really good is World Anvil. World Anvil was originally designed, I think, for RPG kind of uh, d d game people, something that I don't have experience with, but it works perfectly for novels, and right now that's my favorite option of this whole mix of things. And now some bonus tips for making your series Bible. Anytime you put in an item in your Bible that appears in the first book, mark it as canon and mark what page it's on. So that'll tell you what you can change in later books and what is already set in stone in the reader's mind. Next bonus tip, if you use an online series bible like a Wikipedia like Fandom or Word Anvil, you can share that with your readers, fan artists, fan fiction, all of that sort of thing. This will be a great reference for them to use so that they more accurately represent your world without having to constantly dig into the exact part of the book where that information was. Next bonus tip, make sure to actually write your book. Some people get so immersed in world building that they world build for years and they never actually write the story. I know it can be easy to get lost in world building, believe me, world building is my absolute favorite part about writing. But there's a point where you're gonna have to just not spend days developing the economic system in the book when it's never gonna be used. If it isn't relevant to the story, you don't need to spend time working on it. And last but not least bonus tip is to use reference images. This can be a really quick way to summarize what you mean and it's a lot quicker to consume too later when you're flipping through the book. So this is good for characters but also locations and weapons and armor. And if you need to annotate places where there's differences in your vision and the image, that'll save you a lot of time in writing out words. And that was it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you like this channel and you want to help support us, you can always buy Aletheia. Or if dystopian novels aren't your thing, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash cloudkittenchronicles. Make sure to like and share. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.